Well, the month of January has treated the Tenora and Patrick Henry girls basketball teams very differently. The Patriots enter tonight's contest on a six-game win streak, their latest a 68-49 victory at Leipzig. The Rams, on the other hand, have dropped their last two. The most recent, a 60-58 setback versus Fairview in double overtime. They're hoping a little home cooking will be just what the doctor ordered to get back on the winning track tonight. We welcome you aboard, everybody. I am Brent Balbanant. This is Miles Holiday, and we welcome you to the newly christened Emerald. That's right. This is one of the few gyms in the area that does not have a fancy or classy nickname. Scoop Miller and I tried it about a month ago. We're going to rebrand it or at least resubmit the brand. You look around, it is a dark green, the emerald, a very high-end gem, and we're expecting that to play out on the court here this evening, Miles. Well, well, who knew Scoop Miller had good ideas, right? We'll keep that on the down low. <laughs> Scoop always <laughs> doing a great job coming up with stuff. A pretty good job on the Emerald, right? They're hoping it's going to be a shiny type of game for them. Emeralds are shiny. This is a Tenora team. They need something shiny, don't yes. they? Yes. Well, you take a look at it, and woulda, coulda, shoulda in that double overtime loss, uh, again, going into uh, their last contest. But at the same time, you got to kick that to the curb because if you have anything other than the Patriots on your mind here this evening, uh, they're going to walk out of here with their 10th win of the season. This is a good visiting ball club. It's a very good uh, young Patrick Henry team too. So the future is bright for Patrick Henry. We're going to highlight some of the young talent that they have moving forward. But if you don't take care of the basketball against them, watch out. It will be ugly in a hurry. It will be an interesting matchup too because while the Rams have – limited numbers, probably no more than seven deep. Patrick Henry can go as much as nine, possibly ten deep. Do you see that possibly playing a factor tonight? That's kind of what they do, right? They, they mix a lot of bodies in, try to wear you down, hey, even fatigue the officials. Sometimes those fouls that are called early in the game, if officials get worn down, they aren't fouls late in the game. So they will bring up mass waves of humanity at you, trying to make you do turn over to basketball and get easy baskets from Not them. only that, but they're going to lay on the press, whether it be yep. three-quarter court, half court, even picking up in that kind of unique 1-2-2 two, two, slash 2-2-1 two, two, zone. Uh, Tenora needs to be prepared to see a lot of different defenses tonight. How do you handle a press where you take care of the basketball? you got to make sure you use up fakes with your passes, find passing lanes, don't try to go hand-to-hand, -hand. make sure you balance pass it. And here's the thing, Tenora is not going to play as many people, so you're going to have to be very efficient early and often taking care of the basketball against a very active Patrick Henry defense. And one of that, too, leading towards that is an I really think, you take a look at Nova Oakley, who is averaging 11.5 points per contest, but Carly Oakley, a cousin, running the point, can be, and I think they're going to maybe throw down the gauntlet and ask her to be a bit more aggressive this evening because Nova Oakley is going to draw a red jersey no matter where she's at on the court this evening. Yeah, Nova's going to score 12 points a game, 24 against Fairview the last time out, so she's going to get points for you. Who's going to be that second or third one? You're going to have to have really three big-time scorers tonight if you're going to get the win here against Patrick Henry. I had a chance to stop out at practice yesterday afternoon. They went early for the Rams. Also had a chance to sit down and talk with second-year coach Andrew Thiel. We're going to get his breakdown on the recap leading through their first 11 games, but more importantly, previewing tonight's matchup against the 9-3 and three Patriots. Don't you go anywhere. This is the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show, and we've got more of it when we return. You're watching DCTV Sports. The Bob Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show continues on DCTV. Tip-off still about 20 minutes or so away as we are live at the Emerald. It doesn't have a nickname. We're doing our best to give Tenora Gymnasium kind of a classy nickname. But first things first, win, and then everybody starts paying attention. This is going to be a good one here. Patrick Henry makes the road trip to Tenora. After everybody dealing with the fallout of the blizzard of the last 72 hours, it's time to get back on the court. Coach Thiel joining us right now. Coach, before we preview, let's rewind. Sound fair? 
Sounds good. All right. We had a chance to cover you. It's been almost a month since we saw Rams girls basketball. That was at the DPT Classic uh, in Defiance. Went one for one. This has been an interesting, a little bit of a roller coaster ride. But as I was asking you before I hit the record button here, where is this group? We're now past the first of the year. We're deep into the conference portion of your schedule. You ahead of schedule? You on schedule? You working to catch up? Where would you say you are right now? I'd say we're on schedule roughly right now. A couple of games got away from us last week. Uh, it's a tough game at Fairview. Double overtime lost there in Miller City. Down as big as we were starting the fourth quarter, come back and, and lose that one as close to what we did. Um, those are two that kind of got away from us a little bit. Would love to go back and play Archibald again, the DPT. They they took us on that one. But other than that, I think we're about right where we where we expected to be. We'd love to be a little bit further ahead than where we are, obviously. But When you have the Christmas break, Lots of times, one of two things happen. Either you have downtime or if the weather hasn't exactly been friendly. You're trying to schedule games to make up those that were canceled. Lots of times coaches will say, you know what, we save this downtime to maybe do a little bit of install, maybe add a wrinkle, just try and get better at things. Or there may be some sore spots where we're really going to focus on those things to make sure we're shored up after the first of the year. How did you treat the downtime? Our downtime this year, we really worked with this uh, past Christmas break. We really worked on our defense. Uh, we were going to be on the rebounds pretty bad there for a while, and the girls have been doing a lot better. They've responded really well to that. Um, but, yeah, the rebounding was, was a killer for a little bit. Um, transition defense we needed to improve on. Other than that, we did we have to – we worked on some different defensive sets for ourselves, some different zone looks, and we had to throw in some different offenses too to start off the new year for sure. So where are you at right now with the new stuff? It's more of a pacing, or have they taken to it pretty well? It's kind of a pacing right now. Um, we've thrown some different things at the girls. Edgerton, we actually threw the 3-2 out there having never practiced it, and the girls did an excellent job in the game. That really that really was a turning point for the game at Edgerton where we came back to win that one. So we've been working on some different defensive sets. It's, it's something we're working on. It's a building process. We don't have the master by any means yet, but it's something we can give different teams different looks with, try to build some momentum off of, and, and try to capitalize in. Let's go ahead and take a look at tonight's opponent. Patrick Henry comes in. This is an interesting group because they've had some youth last year that has now matured and is really starting to click on all cylinders. Let's start with the straw that stirs the drink. Crossland at point guard. Uh, I don't want to say as she goes, so goes the rest of the team, but she's going to be in your crosshairs tonight. Yeah, Crossland does a really good job controlling the tempo of the game with her team. Um, she's aggressive. She handles the ball well. She's a good scorer, too, which is great when you have a point guard who can score the ball well. Who draws her defensively? Uh, I'm not really sure yet. We're still trying to make that, uh, trying to decide that one. Uh, good chance, Carly. Carly will probably be picking her up defensively, uh, you know, unless we go zone. But uh, it, we go man, Carly will probably be picking her up. Carly's a great athlete. She's probably one of, if not the most vocal member of your team. Great basketball IQ. But if you go to a zone, it's going to be all hands on deck. And the way you run this zone, especially if the ball drops below the free throw line, you're asking the top half, basically your guards, to cover a lot of ground. Yeah, I'm asking a lot of those girls, they, but they do a great job. So we've actually looked at some different rotations with some of our zones, and, you know, it's, well, this is what we should be doing, but this is what's working kind of thing. So the top three girls are doing a great job of, of covering more than their area, and so we're, we're kind of working with that a little bit too, trying some different uh, rotations in our different defensive sets. Tempo, what do you want this evening? I'd love for us to be able to control the tempo of the game, but uh, we can't let it get away from us. I think it's going to be a quick game, quick-paced game. PH, they like to go down and shoot. We can do the same thing. You know, everybody would like to get some fast break opportunities for sure, but ultimately uh, I think we're going to have to keep out of the paint, but they also like to shoot the ball too. Defense is going to win this game, I think. Both teams can shoot the ball well. My girl's been shooting the ball really well. Make sure we knock down uh, Chrisman. She's going to be aggressive inside. We know she's going to be physical, and she's, she's good at what she does. So we've got to make sure we contain her well, but uh, ultimately we need to make sure we close out, keep them out of, off the boards. Nothing left to do but tip this one off. Coach, appreciate your access to practice. Good luck tonight. Hey, thanks for having me. It's Coach Thiel joining us for this pregame. We're back with more of the Bob Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame. You're watching DCTV Sports. Well, we welcome you back to the Emerald, otherwise known as Tenora High School Gymnasium, as the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show continues. We are roughly... 12 minutes away from tip-off as the host Rams trying to get off a two-game skid. They are 6-5 and five overall, 1-1 one and one in the GMC. The Patriots on a six-game winning streak. They are now 9-3 and three overall, 1-0 one and oh in the NWOAL. So this is a non-conference matchup, but rest assured, this would be a quality win for whoever walks out of here with it. 
well, real important for Tenora just to get a win. Yes. After two really tough losses, got to get back on it, get a little bit of more confidence moving forward in the GMC. Still a winnable league for them. Let's go ahead and give you the starting lineups, courtesy of Baker Schindler Company. Baker Schindler Company starting lineups. Let's start with the hosts, led by second year head coach Andrew Thiel. Again, six and five overall, one and one in the GMC. He will send the following five. He hasn't really strayed from this group since the start of the season. At point, it will be Carly Oakley, a 5'5 senior. Again, she's shooting about 60% from the free throw line. She's averaging about six points per ball game. She was up around eight over the month of December, but she has been a more of a look to pass first than score first point guard. But my guess is she's going to get a little bit of a challenge here this evening. They need her to step up tonight. You mentioned her ability to pass the basketball. Five assists last time out against Fairview. Might be one of those games where she looks to get her partners involved early, then tries to score late. At the off guard, it will be Eowyn Blanchard, a 5'6 junior. Blanchard averaging eight points per contest. At the swing, the team's leading scorer, Nova Oakley. She is a cousin to Carly Oakley. Nova Oakley stands in at 5'6. She is a junior, averaging 11, nearly 11 and a half points per contest. She is the team's best three-point shooter, although she has cooled in the month of January. In December, she was shooting 45% from distance. It's still well above the high school average at about 36%. As we talked about, Miles, she is going to draw a lot of defensive pressure tonight. And rightfully so. 24 points against uh, Fairview the other night. And a lot like the legendary Annie Oakley, she is a sure shot from long range. He's been working on that one all week, folks. <laughs> Let's finish out the starting lineups at the post. At power forward, it will be Julia Durfee. Durfee, again, standing in at 5'11", a junior, averaging five points and three boards per contest. And in the middle, Addison Lee. She's had offers to play at several D3 schools. Instead, she is going to run track at the University of Toledo. Lee, again, standing in at six foot. Lee averaging 8.2 points, four and a half boards, one assist, and nearly three blocks per contest. Yeah, Durfee and Lee are going to have to be big in the paint tonight, especially when they get opportunities early in this basketball. A lot of times when you break pressure, you wind up with a layup opportunity. Make sure you don't miss the bunny. On the flip side for the visiting Patriots, led by Justin Sonnenberg in his fifth season at the helm for Patrick Henry. They are 9-3 and three overall, 1-0 and oh in the NWOAL. For the Patriots, the starting five as follows that will take the court at the point. It will be Casey Nelson. Nelson, a 5'7 junior point guard. Nelson shooting 29% from the floor, but 38% beyond the arc. She is averaging four points per ball game, but she is a distributor averaging, I'm looking down here for assists, two per contest. But Coach Sonnenberg said she is the most improved player from the start of practice to this point in time of the season. It'll be real important for Tenora to make sure they locate her on the perimeter, 38%, as you mentioned, from behind the arc. If you don't know where she's at, you can't defend her, so locate her early. A lot of times her three-point shots come off of inside action back out to her. At the off guard, Karis Crossland. Crossland stands in at 5'7". She is a backup point to shooting guard. She is the team's leading scorer at 11.8 per contest, and again, shooting 34% from beyond the arc. This is more than a one-trick pony. They have several deep-range threats on this Patriots roster. If Tenor tries to run them off the line, Crossland and Nelson are going to have to do a good job of up-faking and attacking the lane, and more importantly, finishing. At the swing, it will be Kaya Seaman. Seaman standing in at 5'6 and a senior. Seaman averaging eight points per ball game and two and a half rebounds per contest. Your front court as follows. Carson Weber. Weber, a 5'8 senior. Weber averaging six points and three boards per contest. And then in the middle, and she is a true post, Ada Christman. Just a sophomore, she is averaging nearly eight points, two and a half assists, nearly three steals, and almost two blocks per contest. Addison Lee is going to draw her tonight. I, I tell you what, Brent, she is a stat stuffer supreme, isn't she? Uh, two assists, eight rebounds, nine points, 21 blocks, 34 steals. Hey, by the way, she shoots 54 
44 from behind the arc. What can't she do? She might even pop the popcorn, drive the bus, do it all. And she's just a sophomore. Yes. I got to figure she's going to start getting sniffs from more than just D3 oh, and DT schools as her prep career continues over the next couple of seasons. I'm Brent Balbanoff. This is Miles Holiday. You are watching the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. Those are your Baker Schindler Company starting lineups. We're going to take a quick timeout. We're just around the corner. Big matchup to Nora hosting Patrick Henry. You're watching it on DCTV Sports. There you take a look at some of the officiating crew tonight. Tenora hosting Patrick Henry. We anticipate maybe a slightly smaller than usual crowd. It's supposed to get down to around zero again this evening with wind chills well below it. So what better time to do it than just go ahead and pop on DC TV. You can watch us live on YouTube as well. And as always, no charge, but we do encourage you to subscribe. Doesn't matter whether you are in Defiance County, whether you are in Northwest Ohio, or anywhere around the country, or the world for that matter. It is called the World Wide Web. You can follow us anywhere. Just make sure you subscribe as we work our way more and more into not just the Defiance area, but obviously we're stretching our legs. We did Ayersville last week. We're here at Sonora. A lot of quality high school athletics being played outside the Defiant City limits. And, and those that weren't here, they missed your entrance because the cold outside, the fur hat, the fur coat, <laughs> it was amazing. It was like seeing a rock star come in. I couldn't believe the entourage that you had and the clothing that you're wearing. Yeah. It was impressive, my the friend. The Ayersville girls basketball team has offered to be my posse, <laughs> so I think I'll take them up on it next time we uh, head a little bit farther south. But in all seriousness, uh, it's just going to be a tough night. I do see, obviously, uh, a group of diehard uh, Pilots fans, pardon me, Patriots fans, that have made the trip. It's roughly about even right now between the host Rams and the traveling Patriots fans. This is one of those situations where I still expect there to be intensity because you're going up against a quality opponent, but maybe having to provide a little bit more of your own energy than you might otherwise normally would have. Well, no secret, both schools, both communities, they love their athletics, don't they? Uh, Patrick Henry known to travel, and uh, of course the Tenor people in this beautiful facility. Why would you not want to be here and watch a really good basketball game? Real important for Tenor to weather the storm early here tonight. Don't get down double digits. Don't allow the pressure, the attacking defense of Patrick Henry to kind of overwhelm you early. Weather that storm, and then let things kind of settle in. You can control the pace of the game from there. Well, we touched on what the Patriots are going to do, and that's mix it up. Whether it's full court, quarter court, half court pressure, they do have multiple zones. They do anticipate starting the game in a man-to-man -man defense. On the flip side, if you are Tenora, that's awfully tough to scout. Uh, instead of maybe running three or four different man offenses or three or four different zone offenses, uh, in practice yesterday, Coach Steele said, these are the two main ones we want to go to. You execute, and you force them out of it. Uh, the, the biggest thing, too, is it, getting that, that type of intensity at practice. You're, you're going to have your scout team work against you. It's not the same type of intensity. You're going to have to do it through a walkthrough and then hope that your guards are experienced enough to settle things down for you. On the flip side, Tenor has primarily been a man-to-man -man defensive team, but they did install during the Christmas break a little bit of zone, whether it be 2-3 or 3-2. It's going to look more like a matchup. It depends on where the ball is and how often it drops below the free throw line. But I can tell you this, the top half of that zone, the Oakley Cousins, both Carly and Nova, are going to be expected to drop down and help double if the ball is on their side, the strong side of the wing. But once it goes back out up top, they have a long way to hedge and recover. They are going to be asked to cover a lot of court tonight. Uh, it's really tough to play zone against a really good perimeter shooting team as well. And we highlighted in the pregame, look at how many good shooters are on this 
Patrick Henry roster. You just go up and down. Uh, so many shooters that are shooting about 30% from behind the arc. So you're going to have to do a really good job getting a hand scrambling, like you said, to get in the face of a shooter. But more importantly, that weak side rebound. So you stop the possession after one shot. Now that's one way to break down a zone. Normally you think of a zone buster, somebody that can step back and hit from 20, 21 feet. There are multiple ways to break down a zone. And Coach Sonnenberg said, expect our perimeter passing to be very sharp. Yeah. He goes, we might not get you on the first reversal, but sooner or later, you're going to be a step slow. And there is where the likes of a Casey Nelson, who has some handles, is given the green light to penetrate, stop and pop. Or if the defense rotates, then you're looking down low. There's more than one way to break down a zone. Well, it's nice to have that. The big size inside as well. Once you dribble drive and the defense collapses on you, just make a little bit of a dish for an easy two. We are working our way through the Bob Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. Tenora at six and five. Patrick Henry at nine and three. Will the Patriots walk out of here tonight with double digit victories? Or will the Rams give themselves a little bit of separation? Two games above 500. We will wait and see. We're working our way down to the FM Bank opening tip off. Don't you go anywhere. More of the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show coming your way on DC TV Sports. They get a good look from one of our, this is Tim. Tim is hiding in the corner on the east side of the Emerald here, but he is getting a good shot of the warmups for Patrick Henry. On the flip side, tell you what, they've ditched their candy cane striped jersey bottoms and are wearing their warm up tops. And on the flip side, Tenora has done just the opposite. They're keeping their green candy cane bottoms on and they've ditched their warm up tops. So I don't know if that's a little bit of gamesmanship or <laughs> Maybe that's just the way they like to now, warm up. Now, who'd you say was in the corner? Tim. Tim. And I knew you're going to go. I know where you're time going. Time out? Is he in time out? Oh, what happened? I thought you were going to say nobody puts baby in a uh, corner. Nobody puts, baby, nobody puts Tim in the okay. corner. Mr. Pop Culture <laughs> sitting to the right of me. Tim, I don't know how you feel about being compared to Jennifer Grey in the timeless coming-of-age movie Dirty Dancing, but hopefully you took that as a... <laughs> Do you John likes it. Hopefully you took that as a compliment, buddy. At halftime, we'll recreate that scene where <laughs> he'll run at you and you'll lift him up in the air. What do you think? I'll let you be Patrick Swayze, <laughs> and I'll just stand back and play the role of anybody I'm else. more like Chris Farley in that skit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know where it went off the rails, but I'm going to try and get us back centered here. All right, in all seriousness, does somebody need this game more? If you are Patrick Henry, you're riding a six-game win streak. Yeah. This is a non-conference game. Sure but is. at the same time, when you're riding the crest of a big wave, you don't want it to stop. You've got a chance to pick up your 10th win of the season. On the flip side, Tenora, skid of two games, woulda, coulda, shoulda in their last matchup in double overtime in a tough 60-58 loss against Fairview. You're home. You yeah. gotta hold court. Plus, you just need something to build on as you get back into conference play. Does this game mean more to one of these teams than the other, or is it equally important? I'm always a believer in momentum, right? The success breeds more success. When you're struggling, you are struggling. You lose by one to Miller City, then you have the double overtime loss to Fairview. I think this is a no-brainer. Tenora definitely needs this one, right? You gotta get some kind of momentum. You gotta start feeling good. And how do you do that? Well, you gotta give great effort. So. Great effort early in this basketball game. Going to be real important for the Lady Rams. You see the Rams breaking the huddle around second-year coach Andrew Thiel. They are lining up already for the playing of the national anthem. The Patriots still getting last-second instructions from fifth-year coach Justin Sonnenberg. He's no stranger to this area. As a matter of fact, he coached football. He coached at Defiance High School before stretching his legs to try and get that first opportunity. Well, the Sonnenberg name is synonymous with basketball here in Northwest Ohio. And he has done a great job. Not too long ago, this was a Patrick Henry uh, squad that was struggling to win one or two games. We are listening to the PA start to fade here. And it looks like we will get set 
for the playing of the National Anthem. The National Anthem, courtesy of the Defiance Elks Lodge 147. And usually before they fire up the National Anthem, usually we get the obligatory Ohio High School Athletic Association, what would you call it? Reader, instruction, basically. Setting the expectations. Yes, setting the expectations. Good verbiage. Basically asking everybody to show good sportsmanship, cheer for their teams. And at the same time, remember what it means at the end of the day when you take the jersey off and head back to your respective home. Well, the last of the crowd, I think, has filed in. I think what we have right now is what we're going to have for the rest of the evening. There you get a good look at the colors being unfurled on the west side of the emerald here. Yeah, it's one of the cool things in Northwest Ohio, how they dropped the flag, and it's a really big sight. A lot of pride in America here in Northwest Ohio. And as the PA is asking everyone to stand, the national anthem, courtesy of the Defiance Elks Lodge, number 147. National Anthem, brought to you tonight by the Defiance Elks Lodge, number 147. We gave you the Baker Schindler Company starting lineups earlier in the Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show. We are getting set for the f and Bank opening tip-off, as there you see the Patriots of Patrick Henry in their traveling red uniforms with the white lettering and numerals, the black waist stripe. They are announcing the non-starters before they get to the starters. On the flip side is the home team, as you would expect. The Tenora Rams decked out in their white home jerseys with the emerald green lettering and numerals of the big T at the bottom of the shorts. And there you take a look at Patrick Henry. You see Casey Nelson double zero for Patrick Henry. She is wearing a face guard. Reminiscent, I remember Rip Hamilton for the yep. Pistons years ago wore that little protection on the uh, grill. Now there you see a solid post in six foot Ada Crisman, just a sophomore. And that'll be a fun matchup in the low blocks tonight as she does battle with Addison Lee for Tenora. There you take a look at the game day starters for the Emerald Green and White. She is partially shielded by the officials. But whether it's John, Will, or Tim, when they clear out, I do want to make sure I promised her she gave me some help with some pronunciations for the Patrick Henry roster. It is Christy Priggy. Christy Priggy is the mother of Kenzie Priggy. She is a reserve player for Patrick Henry. She said, no, don't put me on the air. And I said, I'm a man of my word. You <laughs> helped me. So we are going to give you the proper kudos. So at some point in time tonight, we'll give her, I'm sure, a really good close-up. Very nice lady. A great job here at Tenora setting the scene. Look at the uh, Jumbotron highlighting all the players, breaking out the spotlight. It's got a big time feeling here, Brent. They've got to have that tough girl look when they do the hype video. 
This group is incredibly quiet. I know when talking with Coach Andrew Thiel, he's like, every day in practice, he's like, I gotta work them up. I gotta work them up. They're just naturally quiet. So they're incredibly smart. One of the smartest groups of players of any sport he's ever been around. And there you get a good look at the assistant coaches. Who would have thought that there's such a thing as quiet teenage girls? <laughs> I'll let that comment stand on its own. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to do some talking here tonight. Yes. Especially against the pressure that Patrick Henry likes to employ. Uh, we're getting ready for the FNM Bank opening tip off. In the center circle, it will be Lee for Tenora. Christman for Patrick Henry. Official with last second instructions. Yeah, how about the offensive tip situation by Patrick Henry? It's up, and Crispin wins it, and they're quickly into the front court. Boy, Nelson with a nice wraparound pass, Ooh. and immediately we've got a player down. And that is Ada Crispin. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, she is holding that left ankle. Oh, boy. Ran into Blanchard, and she is in a world of pain. Well, right now the trainer is out, and so now Coach Sonnenberg saunters over. Boy, barely into this contest. And this place has become deftly quiet. Now you got to give a lot of credit, though. Trainers there real quick. Officials recognized it. You never want to see someone get injured, especially this early in the game. Just one of those unfortunate things. Well, again, we're partially screened out here unless we lean way over in the... Um, Kind of, it's not a true crow's nest, but it's an elevated landing area. But we've got to lean forward to be able to see the better part of the baseline toward the near side here. And right now, everybody's become deftly quiet, hoping the best for Ada Christman. And they're working it over. Her ankles are taped. They're doing a little bit of flexibility checking here. That's Emily Volmar here from Tenora. She was sitting in the corner on a baseline, immediately recognized that she ran over. Both teams uh, have athletic trainers, and boy, what a, a good thing it is nowadays. Years ago, you just kind of leave it up to the coach to tape it. It's ironic because I had about a 10-minute conversation with Emily as the JV was warming up, and she said, you know, you've seen everything, but she said, fortunately, in her career, granted, still only about four to five years into it, she graduated from the University of Findlay. She says, I haven't seen anything terribly tough. They are getting her to her feet, and hopefully she'll be able to put some weight on that left foot but right now she is not, and she draws a round of applause as she hobbles off the court, and we will certainly hope the best for the young sophomore. Barely into this ball game, just a few seconds. Not only does that hit you psychologically, but also from a performance standpoint. I mean, this is eight points, roughly five oh, boards, absolutely. and a yeah. huge defensive presence right. that all of a sudden you've got to replace immediately into this contest. And never a good thing when you lose one of your best players, right? If, if you're Coach Sonnenberg, though, you have to role model calm and collectedness and say, hey, we're still a good ba basketball team. Somebody's got to step forward. Six seconds into this ball game, and they have still not been able to get Christman to the end of the bench. So you can just feel the air and the energy dissipate immediately in this gym. Both teams will try and recreate it here. Uh, looks like they're going to take her back to the locker room and reevaluate from there. Quick hands, top of the key. Diving Blanchard was fortunate. She wasn't called for a travel, but it will be a jump ball. A good active hands by Patrick Henry. You saw Seaman get in there and cause the jump ball. Uh, Tenora got to be aware of what's going on. Come back and help. No one to pass to. Well, with Christman out right now, Grace Haas, the only other real post on the floor, for Patrick Henry, she stands in at about 5'10". As right now, tight man-to-man -man defense. They're really hounding the dribbler out front. And is that a three-second call? Well, they were posting up Julia Durfee, but just a little too long in the paint. I'm looking over at her parents, and mom just kind of winces. Well, they play defense where they'll make you yep. wince. Right now, looks like a soft man-to-man. -man. 
But again, going underneath the screen is a little bit of a risk. This three ball off the mark. Oh, great up and under move by Weber, but she's rejected. That was Addison Lee. Held her ground, had the wherewithal to see the up and under, and went and got the block. She gets nearly three a ball game. Good ball reversal from the near corner. That three skims off the iron by Durfee. Long shot means long rebound in Oakley. And they're not going to waste any time. Another quick three, this time by Nova Oakley. They had two good looks at it. Yeah, two really good looks. Just got to get one to fall down. And nobody picks up the dribbler. Another swat. Back-to-back -back possessions, back-to-back -back blocks. Oakley to Oakley. This time Nova on the drive into a double team. Hard contact. Yeah, they're letting them play early. Crossland into the low blocks. Nice wrap around paint. Haas sees this one rim in and out, but she follows her own shot. Does she want to force it back up? Blanchard forces her baseline. Got to get out on a good three-point shooting team, and this one rattles in and out. Yeah, both, Seaman thought she had it. Both teams kind of dodging bullets by open threes early. Nova Oakley releases long outlet. And after a flurry of what, about three to four possessions per team, Tenora breaks the scoreboard first. Everybody trying long range bombs, but easiest way to score is a layup, especially on a run out. Speaking of long range, that is a heat check by Crossland. One and done. Oakley skip pass far side. Here's something you don't often see, the stop and pop jumper. Lee thought she had it, but leaves it just a bit short. Weber releases. They are not gun shy. Another long three short by Seaman. Again, one and done. Oakley with another board and maybe amped up just a little bit. Both teams want to run. Coach Thiel talking to his senior point guard saying that wasn't there that time. Slow it down. Yeah, I like the idea of getting up and down, but even if you complete that pass, where are you going with it? You're just going to the baseline. Make it a pass where you can catch it and score. Casey Nelson will slow it down as she walks it across the timeline. Blanchard waiting for her. Off the screen. A nice bounce pass by Geldy. Down low. Tough move to the iron and drawing the foul. Heading to the free throw line. Carson Weber will shoot two. Yeah, Weber, great job of using that left shoulder to get a little bit of contact, knowing that she's going to be contact, get the ball up in the air. If it goes, doesn't go in, you're going to get the two free throws. Nova Oakley picks up her first foul as the first free throw is all net for Geldy. Geldy, a 57% free throw shooter, although it's been a small sample size. She's now 5 of 8. Check that. Is it Geldy? No, that's number 4. My apologies to Carson Weber. Like I said, Carson, you're fantastic from the free throw line. <laughs> Shooting 65%. She's now 12 of 19. Another turnover off the pressure. They were trying to run and trap after they got to half court. Recognized by Oakley, but spun out of control with the pass. Another turnover. 2-2. Two -two. I don't want to say it's almost like a gut punch for both teams seeing Christman injured six seconds into the game, but right now it's like both teams have kind of had to hit the reset button almost immediately after the tip and try and restart the energy. Boy, step back three. That is a long-range shot, and Karis Crossland drains a Premier Bank three-pointer. Yeah, release, rotation, and splash, and now the active hands. Almost another turnover. Three on two. Does Tenora want to run it? Boy, lots of contact, and Blanchard leaves that one well short. Yeah, Weber did a good job, though, holding her ground. Oh, Nelson with a tough move, and she draws the contact. Now, this is what Patrick Henry likes to do. Get up and down. They'll hit a timely three. They'll break your back. How about the contact initiated that time by Nelson? This Patrick Henry team, they will put pressure on you from behind the arc and then put it on the ground, beat you to the hole. Nelson, a 60% free throw shooter. Again, if you missed the Bob Estel Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show, Coach Sonnenberg said, as she goes, so will go this team. It wasn't enough to have Crossland scoring nearly 12 a game and Crispin at 8-5. and five. He said she was a turnover machine through the first couple weeks of November and even December. He said she has slowed down, played within herself. Doesn't mean that she can't explode, as you saw right there. What a tremendous gear, but she's just playing smarter. As the second rattles in and out. 
So she can't hit on either, and the score remains 5-2. to two. Yeah, a little too flat on those free throws. Got to get a little more arc on it. Empty trip, though, wound up being a good foul by Tenora. Oakley keeping a waist-time dribble in between the circles. Crossland draws her. A lot of motion. Sagging man-to-man -man defense right now. I had the post entry, just a little too tardy seeing it. Popping out on the wing. Durfee doesn't want it. Five out. Pretty much. Bringing uh, the post down from the opposite side. Emma Bailey has checked in for Tenora, and that pass maybe just got a little bit away from Nova Oakley. She steps on the baseline. I know Coach Steele highlighted to you how important it is to take care of the basketball. He is not going to be excited with the fact that four turnovers already in this first quarter. They average nearly 15 a game. He said he wants 12 or less. On the flip side, Patrick Henry averages nearly 17 and a half. Nice drive, nice dish, draining the three. Karis Crossland with her second Premier Bank three-pointer. All six of her points from beyond the arc. Oh, the super sophomore. Two big threes already. You see why they love her. Top of the key. Lee on the drive. Big girl running, and she draws the contact. Take your pick. Good start to this game for her. Two blocks on the defensive end. A little basketball karma when you're doing good things on one end. Good things happen to you on the offensive end. She'll go to the line, but Tenor going to have to do a much better job of getting into the face of shooters. Uh, these Patrick Henry shooters, there's no one around them. Kaya Seaman picks up her first. Lee misses her first. She was 17 of 36 prior to that miss. Just over 47% from the line. She'll try and hit one of two here and pull the Rams to within five. Halfway down, it kicks out. She threw her hand skyward. She thought that one was good. Getting back, quickly running. Oh, nice bounce pass down low. Nice job to set herself by Addie Schwab. And Schwab goes underneath and uses the rim to help, and Tenora answers quickly. Oakley. Finally answers at the other end for just the second basket from the floor. Cuts the lead to six. On the drive, nice scoop. Ball tipped out. Nelson open for three. Got it! Third from beyond the arc. Another FM Bank three. And the Patriots are heating up. Yeah, another free look, right? You give them free looks, they'll bury it. Nova Oakley with a three. How about Nova Oakley? Whatever you can do, I can do better. You want to play three game? I'll play three game. Five white jerseys getting back, staying in that man-to-man -man defense. On the drive and a nifty little finger roll by Kaya Seaman. Uh, Seaman has been the one dictating the pace for this Patrick Henry team. Ball being bounced around. Oakley to Oakley on the right wing. Skip pass. Good ball movement. Lee will launch for three, and the draperies swish. Wow. Well, f and Bank is getting their money's worth on their three-point <laughs> sponsorship tonight. Nelson on the drive. Lee, I think, is going to be the guilty party, although she thought she had all ball. And a change in call not forthcoming. Well, it's definitely a three for all. Tenora keeps answering the big threes by Patrick Henry. Just staying within shouting distance. Every time you think Patrick Henry is going to run away early in this game, Tenora makes a big three. That foul go against Lee? They haven't put it up on the board that we're looking at. Well, we got a buzzer sound. We're still going with the buck 17 left to go first quarter. Yeah, officials waved off the buzzer. Kenzie Priggy. On the drive, the dish, the three, halfway down and spits out off the fingertips of Weber. Yeah. Oakley will cross over. Yeah, it looked like Weber was going to get it to Barry again. Well, Any shot that Patrick Henry's putting up, it looks like it's going in. Lee, pump fake, baseline drive, kicks it to the far corner. Long three by Durfee. They're getting good looks. They're just not falling. Speaking of falling, Patriots do that out of bounds, but it's last touched. It should be to Nora basketball. Yes, it is. That was Oakley inside, working hard. Saves a possession here for Tenora. 
Under a minute left to go in the quarter. We'll see if Tenor decides to run some offense or maybe work for the final shot of the quarter. Good ball reversal. Lee's got a good look, but it's off the far end of the iron. Nice job to Sky by Durfee. But she brought the ball down. She's stripped, and we're going to have a tie-up in the middle of the paint. And hey, anytime you bring the ball down, bad things happen, right? You bring it down to a sea of hands, the chances are you're going to lose it. It is one of those things coaches will talk about nonstop, but yet it seems to happen all the time in basketball. So 32 and 9, 10 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Tight ball game, 15-10. Patriots with the lead. They're going to zone it up for this last possession. Boy, nice interior pass. Nice collapsing by Tenora. Ball being tapped around, and Durfee comes away with the steal. 20 seconds. There's plenty of time left to get the ball up the court. Now, a little bit of a mover. Got away with it. Boy, look at the power forward showing off some good handles. Lee. To the corner, Oakley, nice drive, dishes. Blanchard drains the 17-footer. A great job of driving and kicking to the open jumper, and more importantly, bearing it. I tell you what, a little helter-skelter to start, but we've got ourselves a contest. The first eight minutes in the books, the visiting Patriots leading the host Rams by three, 15 to 12. We're back with the second quarter right after this. You're watching DC TV Sports. Second eight minutes about to be put up on the scoreboard clock. We welcome you back to the Emerald Tenora High School Gymnasium. Brent Balbanon alongside Miles Holiday. 15-12, the visiting Patriots leading the host Rams. Kind of a tale of the first four minutes for one team, the second four minutes for another. But if the rest of this half plays out like the last of the first quarter did, I think both teams are starting to fire on all cylinders now. Andrew Thiel got to be ecstatic because they weathered the storm, right? It looked like Patrick Henry was going to start going to assert their dominance. They are burying every open look uh, in the middle of part of that first quarter, but his girls showed great character. They responded extremely well. Taking a look at your Mark Motes Ford quarters stat summary, not a lot, but Karis Crossland has drained a couple of threes to lead all players with six. Hot on her heels, Nova Oakley with a three and a 15-footer. She's got five, and that is your Mark Motes stat summary. Stopping and popping from 15. Awen Blanchard had a good look, but it's off the heel of the iron. Wanting to run. Here comes Crossland. Finally picked up about five feet from the basket. And again, there's that help defense, but you've got to recover. They dodge a bullet with a long three. Whoa, that was a dangerous cross-court pass from Bailey. And Tenora, very fortunate they didn't turn that one over. <laughs> really close to that sideline, but Oakley tiptoed it just enough to keep possession and just one of those effort fouls by Paige Boyer. Wrong place, wrong time, trying to get the basketball. Boyer picking up her first. Team foul number one, so just underway here, second quarter. And a good job to get rid of the basketball to a guard by Bailey. And you saw Seaman with a hand on the hip trying to push the dribbler. You're going to get away Boy. with that until the officials call it. It is physical. Blanchard hits the deck but saves it. And Oakley, the beneficiary, as she drains another Epin and Bank three-pointer. Yeah, Carly Oakley can fill it up. This Tenora team, fantastic at responding. Oh, nice dribble penetration and the pretty touch with the left hand by Kaya Seaman. Yeah, Seaman reestablishes control of this basketball game. Early, she was controlling the tempo not here of late, but she reestablishes that she's going to be tough to stop, especially when she dribble drives. And now Patrick Henry looks like they're ratcheting the pressure up a little bit. They're going half court. They're picking up man to man. Oakley beats a path down the middle of the court. And now Tenora can get into their half court offense. Nice drive and dish. Blanchard's foot on the line. Weak side board. Oakley, Johnny on the spot. Can't get the friendly roll. And look out. Here comes Nelson. Like a gazelle in the wild and swatted away, stays with it. 
Durfee recovers, and Addison Lee, is that her third or her uh, fourth block tonight? That's Addison Lee's third block. Just does a great job of staying down until she knows that the shot's going up. Nice slip. Dishing it off. Bailey kicks it to the corner, and I'm not sure Lee was thinking that ball was coming to her. She looked a bit flat-footed. Weber into the paint. Another steal. Watch for the dunk. Lee uncontested. Oh, she can't finish with the layup, but she does draw the foul. As Crossland hustling back, I thought Lee was going to have an easy one there, but Crossland worked her way back, harassed her. She's going to get called for the foul, but taking Lee to the line. And Patrick Henry, no balance on the defensive no. end after that steal by Lee. Well, Lee upset that she missed that bunny. She's a 47% free throw shooter. She was 0 for 2, now 1 for 3. They're keeping uh, track of turnovers over there. Both coaches really highlighted that as an area of emphasis. What do you have through the first eight minutes? Uh, Tenora has done a great job of limiting it lately. Started out with four early, just one since. Patrick Henry at three turnovers in this basketball game. Shot from the near corner, and again, one and done. Durfee with a little <laughs> brushing the dirt off her shoes look, saying clear out, I've got this. Lee almost carried the basketball. They're coming out, they're forcing it to the sideline and now double teaming her, she needs help. And she walked with the basketball. And Lee saying, I had a little help. If you turn your back to the defense dribbling the basketball, Patrick Henry is gonna swarm and trap you. You have to keep your eyes towards the rim so you can see all the defenders. Substitution, Grace Haas will check in for Addie Schwab. We talked about the deep bench that Patrick Henry has. They will go nine, sometimes 10 deep. It's going to be made even more crucial tonight again with the early injury to starting center Ada Christman. Just six seconds into the game. Three ball from the corner pocket. Karis Crossland has yet to score from inside the arc. Her third Premier Bank three of the night. Yeah, Crossland likes two. She likes two, but she really loves the three ball. Lee on the drive, telegraphs the pass. It's deflected out of bounds by Crossland. Like if you're Andrew Thiel, you're going to tell your girls when you're in that zone, where's the shooter? In the corner. Let's be aware of that. Get a hand in her face. Don't let her catch and get a free shot. Tell you what, testimony to Patrick Henry's perimeter passing. Off the inbound, quick three by Durfee. Long board kicks out to Lee. They'll reset. Oh, how did she thread the needle? Oakley down low to Durfee. Back out to Oakley. Drives to the free throw line. Up top, Lee's three is going to be short. Lee's got to get up as they release. Crossland wide open for an uncontested layup. Her first basket from inside the arc tonight. Yeah, Lee had an argument. She was contacted after she shot the three ball. You got to allow the shooter to land. She was on the floor and that allowed Patrick Henry to get a breakaway. A little bit of a run here for the Patriots as they're now up by five. Blanchard releases the basketball. Lee on the drive into the paint, keeps going and finishes with a feathery touch. Uh, she has what been a move. fantastic on the defensive end and very efficient on the offensive end. And how about this young lady? Have yourself a night. Speaking of efficient, Karis Crossland with her fourth three. And here's Nelson anticipating with the steal and the breakaway layup. And Coach Steele needs a timeout. This is what Patrick Henry does. They will bury you from behind the arc and then really throw the dirt on you with a steal and then a finish. 7-0 run by the Patriots, and Tenora needs a timeout. We'll take a break with them. Don't go anywhere. You're watching more Rams-Patriots basketball on DC TV Sports. Well, you see a look at half court. We are back at the Emerald, Tenora High School Gymnasium, Brent Balbinot, Miles Holiday. It is a 7-0 run by Patrick Henry. This was just a three-point game at the end of the first quarter, 15-12. But right now, we were talking about it, turnovers. And in, yeah. in specific, points off of turnovers. 
Things have changed since I asked you last time, Miles. What do you have now? Well, Nelson with that steal at half court and then the quick conversion uh, to Nora. Eight turnovers now. And uh, when they've taken care of the basketball for parts of this game, they've stayed in it. But when they turn it over, boy, Patrick Henry will make you pay in a hurry. 27-19, Tenora needs a good look. They get a wide open look for three, and that is exactly what Nova Oakley needed, her second F&M three-point three shot, I should say, of the evening. Yeah, good execution coming out of the timeout. Coach Steele drew up an opportunity, and they took advantage of it. Durfee showing some quick hands in the low blocks with the steal and another turnover. Eowyn Blanchard tries to split a double team. She is pickpocketed. It's three on nobody. Who wants to finish the fun? This one's going to Grace Haas. A great pass to Grace Haas. Got her to a sweet spot. All she had to do was go straight up. And is this going to be a foul? A little bit of hand checking. Looks like Weber going to be the guilty party for the Patriots. Uh, there's been a lot of hand checking going on in this first half. Officials of said, look, if you're going to dribble up top, you better be very physical uh, that time, a little too much on the perimeter. That should be Seaman's second foul. She will come out, checking in. Number 21, Kenzie Priggy. Again, the luxury of that deep bench for Coach Sonnenberg as the ball will be inbound on the baseline. Durfee will be the trigger woman. Oakley right back to Durfee. Oakley, another skip pass to the far side. Nice job, Nova Oakley. Right idea, left a little short. Johnny on the spot. Carly Oakley, no good. Bailey a chance, nothing doing. That's a dagger. Oh, what a save by Blanchard, but it's right to Patrick Henry. One-on-one, -on -one, going in strong, and halfway down, this one spits out. Priggy staying with it, and finally corralled by Durfee. Yeah, both teams just working hard. Almost a great effort on the defensive end by Tenor, and then another great rebound by Patrick Henry. Both teams scrambling. Oakley to Oakley. Durfee testing the waters on the right wing. Top of the key. Blanchard with a long-range bomb. One and done. Nice two-handed board by Schwab. A really good ball reversal. Unfortunately, no success for Tenor on that. Nice drive by Crossland. Nothing doing, but she kicks it back out up top. Long three, rattles in and out. Boy, they are getting looks. It's a seven-point lead. It could easily be twice that. Yeah, both teams look a little bit tired right now. You see a lot of open mouths and hard breathing. Nova Oakley stripped by Sophie Geldy. And like a line change in hockey, here come three, <laughs> three more red jerseys for Patrick Henry. Tenora will send in one as Lee catching a breather. Will now spell Bailey. Carly Oakley with five points. We talked about her maybe needing to step up a little bit tonight. As a long three by Nova Oakley. Another F&M bank three. That's her third of the night. And boy, did Tenora need that. Yeah, great screen by Durfee inside, though, to get her free. Nice job by Oakley to drop down and help take away the baseline with Lee. Spin move, and Derpy thought she was set, but apparently she caught her from the waist up. I was just going to say that was an unbelievable drop step, and it was unbelievable because it was a travel. Yep. Great call by the officials. What's that make for Patrick Henry? They haven't had very many, have they? No, that's just uh, their fifth one. They averaged 17 and a half. Buck 35 left to go in the half. When you think about it, that's absolutely amazing that their record is 9-3, and three, averaging 17 and a half turnovers a game. They play defense. Nice spin move by Oakley. Kicks it to the near corner. Lee, left to right, step in for three. <laughs> F&M Bank, you're getting your sponsorships worth tonight. Oh, these ladies from Tenor and Patrick Henry, not just shot takers, shot makers. Nice strip by Oakley. One on one. She's going to go coast to coast against Boyer. 360 spin and finishes. The degree of difficulty looking good on the camera. Uh, every time Patrick Henry looks like they're going to run away, Tenora comes climbing back up by one. All of a sudden down seven, now up by one with less than a minute left to go in the half. Near corner, long three. 
Skims off the iron. Nelson weak side board on the drive and finishes with a feathery touch. Oh, how about the nice little right hook by Nelson. Oakley, long pass up the court. Durfee, lots of contact. Great look as Oakley continued to follow, making it a two-on-one. Uh, Carly Oakley always in the right spot at the right time for Tenora. Another big bucket. While both teams firing on all cylinders right now. 34-20, pardon me, 32-29. And we've got a whistle. 30-second timeout being called by the Patriots. We will keep it here. Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, coaches sometimes call timeout, and you don't know why, but Andrew Thiel called timeout when his girls were scrambling, and it was a seven-point lead for Patrick Henry. What a great timeout because it's been Tenora ever since. They have climbed back in it and grabbed the lead. This is a heck of a basketball game. Just when it looked like the Patriots were about to run to Nora out of their own gym, what's been the difference in the last three minutes, in your well, opinion? Taking care of the basketball one, right? And then moving the basketball. Remember that big three by Lee at the, at the left side of the court was because of a great screen by Durfee. So being, being efficient, but it all starts for Tenora. you got to take care of the basketball because that's what Patrick Henry, that's what the, you get a lot of their points from, transition. 11.7 .7 seconds left to go in the half. It's going to require some extra defense here by Tenora. Let's see what the Patriots drew up coming out of this timeout. Nelson stripped. It remains... Patriots basketball now with seven and seven ten seconds. Well, I thought that was off of Nelson with that high dribble. Kind of a break there for Patrick Henry. Inbounding Nelson clearly is who they want to get it to. This is going to be in the backcourt. Is this now becoming just a one-on-one -on -one matchup? Nelson driving against Lee. Dishes. That ball might have been partially blocked by Oakley. I think it was. Crossland had a great look, and Oakley got a finger on it. Yeah, Oakley just hustled. Had a screen away that got Crossland free, but she did not stop. Oakley gets the left hand on it. Man, back and forth. Instead of like a couple of heavyweights standing in the middle of the ring trading punches, this was more like a track meet. And both teams going to catch a much needed breather as they head to their respective locker rooms. At the half, Tenora overcoming a seven-point deficit. They take a one-point lead into their respective locker rooms. Rams 32, Patriots 31. We'll take a two-minute break, a two-minute timeout. Back with your Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. You're watching DC TV Sports.
Yeah, we're working. I'm Brent Balbinot. <laughs> He's Miles Holiday. We welcome you back to the Emerald Tenora High School Gymnasium. It's time now for the Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show. Our score overcoming a seven point deficit in the second quarter when it looked like Patrick Henry was about ready to run the Rams out of their own gym. Man, did they save their best for the final four minutes. As a matter of fact, we're going to get to two players already in double figures for Tenora, a third one point away, but it's just been the stars stepping up tonight to get the job done from down seven to up one as both clubs head to their respective locker rooms, 32-31 Rams with the lead. Miles, what's been the take that you've had so far here through the first 16 minutes? Well, they're playing George Lurgan. Who do you love here in the gym? Who don't you love for Tenora? Unbelievable effort. <laughs> Carly Oakley, though, just been absolutely everywhere on the floor. And if you are Coach Thiel, you got to love the attitude of your young ladies. Two times a big lead dissipated because you gave great effort. Now you go in, take care of the basketball in the second half. You're going to get a win that you much need. I called Carly Oakley as kind of a sleeper or pick to click in the Estill Chevrolet Cadillac pregame. She averages six points per ball game. She has nine at the half. Yeah, she has nine. And they'd be in trouble, though, if it wasn't the work of Julia Durfee, uh, the big post player. Three blocks in the first half, a couple big threes on the other end, doing a great job along with Lee. Uh, Addison Lee did a great job but with defense as well, and she had a couple big threes. So the big players uh, for this team have really stepped forward. On the, slips, on the flip side for Patrick Henry, Six seconds into this ball game, they lose starting center Ada Christman. Oh. Again, Christman went down with an ankle injury. The good news is she did not leave the gymnasium. She is still in uniform, but she is not sitting on the bench. And uh, we will wish that young lady the best, but she will not be playing tonight. So there goes nine points and eight boards per contest. Step up. Your star just picks up more of the slack. Uh, Karis Crossland, she averages 12. She's got 14 at the half, including four three-pointers. Yeah, I might as well call her Mrs. Big Time because she was big time in that first half. A three ball, big time for what Patrick Henry loves to do. And he got to like the attitude of Patrick Henry too. Lose your big star. I didn't see any panic out of them, right? Everybody just said, let's just step up. We do what we do, and that's play really good defense and shoot the three ball. Who else has stepped up is point guard Casey Nelson. She is more of a distributor, more of a pass first point guard, but probably being challenged by Coach Sonnenberg with Christman out. She averages just over four per game. She has seven. Yeah, big uh, layup right here after a turnover at the end of the uh, first half. It's really going to be anyone's ball game. Both teams turned it over a great deal in the first half. Take care of the basketball and make your shots. Free throw line for both teams wasn't great either, and kind of reminiscent of the temperature outside, a little bit cold. Let's go ahead and get you your Mark Motes Ford stat summary. Again, at the half, your Mark Motes Ford stat summary. Let's start with scoring and leading all players Karis Crossland. She's got 14, including three, pardon me, four three-pointers. She leads all scores. As we mentioned, point guard Casey Nelson with seven points, four of those coming in the second quarter. Kaya Seaman with four, Tarson Weber with a deuce. That rounds out the starters. They do have four bench points, though, a deuce apiece for Grace Haas and Addie Schwab. On the flip side, four of five starters doing the damage for the Rams. Two players in double figures, Nova Oakley. She has drained three three-pointers. She has 11. Addison Lee with two three-pointers. To her credit, she has 10. We mentioned Carly Oakley averaging six a game. She has nine. And then a deuce for Eowyn Blanchard. All right, so what have you got for turnovers? Because that is how uh, the Patriots built a big lead, and then that's also how Tenora right. recovered from it. Yeah, Tenora with nine turnovers. Uh, Coach said he wanted to stay around 12. They're going to have to do a really good job in the second half. I want to reevaluate there. Uh, Patrick Henry with six turnovers, so both teams a little bit sloppy, but for Patrick Henry, averaging what you said, 17 and a half turnovers, a little bit better for them than where they should be you know, taking care of the basketball. And I think Nelson doing a pretty good job running the point for them. Both teams were a little helter-skelter in the early going, especially to Nora. They seem to have settled down. Does the tempo favor one over the other, or is it kind of sauce for the goose? Yeah, both teams have showed that they can get up and down, right? So if I'm both coaches, go ahead. Let's run, ladies. Let's have some fun. Let's see if we can put 100 on this board. 
We're going to take a quick timeout. Back with more of the Midwest Community Federal Credit Union halftime show at the Emerald. A one-point difference. Host Tenora 32. Visiting Patrick Henry 31. You're watching DC TV Sports. Never let it be said that we aren't men of our word here at DCTV. On the left, you see the big Patrick Henry logo on the shoulder or basically left side of her sweater. That is Christy Priggy. And I told her that we would give her some face time. She was tremendous in helping me do uh, basically the roster. Oh, yes, we're getting her from multiple angles. Will, John, gentlemen. She is going to be, well, actually, you'll be her favorites. I'll just stand back in the shadows. But in all seriousness, there's a lot of people that it takes to get an event like this done. So often you don't hear about it. Scorers table, officials, janitors that keep the place clean and open up the doors. Christy Priggy helped me out with the pronunciation guide for the Patrick Henry roster. Classy lady. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Tell her that you saw her on TV. Uh, she deserves hazard pay having to deal with you all that time. <laughs> she was actually very polite, so nice to meet her. All right, play resumes. Second half on the drive. Karis Crossland trying to give the Patriots the lead, but the running one-hander off the mark. Oakley. Boy, look at the top half of this defense. They are extending. My guess is Coach Sonnenberg said no more open looks from three. Yeah, both teams probably should have talked about perimeter defense in that first half. It was kind of weird seeing Crossland actually take a shot on the other end inside the arc. Testing the waters in the far corner. Blanchard surrenders it. Checking to see, is this, is this a man-to-man, -man or are they just trying to double-team there? Yeah, run and jump principle, but yeah. they're going to make him pay for making the, the gamble on trying to get the trap. You leave Nova Oakley open, and you're going to pay for it. And the lead extends to three. Boy, it's almost like the Red Sea parted for Nelson, and she didn't expect it. A little hard with the left hand, but in the middle, Crossland with the garbage put back. Yeah, Give her poor, 16. Poor communication by Tenora on that screen and go allowed <laughs> Nelson to get to the rim. Boy, look at this. 1-2-2 two, two zone press. Oakley on the drive, hits the deck. That was a dangerous pass, but she does draw the contact. And the foul is going to be charged to Nelson. That'll be her first. There's a no doubt about it. You can't hip check. If it's roller derby, you can, <laughs> but not in basketball. Rams will inbound from the near side. Oh, they run the inbounds well. And Oakley, a little contact. Stripped of the ball, but Blanchard's there to pick it up. And she'll jack up a three off the front of the iron. Oakley almost had it. And who's it out of bounds off of? It looks like it's going to remain Rams basketball. I think Crossland got a piece of that one on the shot. Kind of throw, forced it to go awry. Lob pass, that one telegraphed. Stolen away by Nelson. It's two on one. Oh, nice crossover move and can't finish. Boy, she's upset. That's the second point blank layup she's missed. Uh, she never picked a side. Got to get over to that left-hand side if you're going to attack that left-hand side of the lane. Blanchard on the drive. Stripped, kicks it back out. Open look for three. Oakley, halfway down, it spits out. Crossland wanting to run. The dish. Boy, they will take threes all day long. This one's off the mark. Oakley with another board. Yeah, a lot of green lights if you're in a red jersey. Shooter's got to shoot. 
Durfee. And now it looks like the Rams will slow down their half-court offense a bit. Unless you're wide open for three. And Lee, around the world, it kicks out. Nelson had it. Blanchard almost stripped her. Outlet to Seaman. It's two on three, and she decides discretion's the better part of Valor. Open for three, another corner. High ranking on <laughs> Rainbow, no good. Crashing the glass, Schwab, and I think she picks up the foul. Yeah, Eddie Schwab, smart play. Just gets underneath, I believe it is Lee that she gets underneath at the low block, gets the offensive board, and puts Durfee in a bad spot, or was it Lee rather, in a bad spot, has to commit the foul. At the stripe. First to two is up, and the first to two is long for Abby Schwab. Mackenzie well, Priggy has had two wide open corner three looks, and she was upset with herself. And I really like what I saw there from Kaya Seaman. She walked over and just trying to settle her teammate down. Uh, some leadership, knowing that you're going to have that opportunity, but later, forget about the ones that you haven't missed. It's the next one that's important. Second is up, second is long. She knew it. She followed her shot. Offensive board, and they'll reset their half-court offense. Well, a cardinal sin, right? The shooter should never get the rebound. This one's off the mark, being battled around down low. Priggy had it. Did she step out of bounds? I think it's going to be a nope, foul Nope, it's going to be a foul. <laughs> Julia Durfee picks up her second. It's a non-shooting foul. Nelson will be the trigger woman on the baseline. Like bring in Hostin for this out of bounds, getting a little bit bigger. Nobody on the ball. Nelson will lob it out in between the circles. Geldy back to Nelson. Boy, lots of contact. She's going to drive, and a late whistle from the official up top. And I'm looking at Andrew Thiel, and he just looks skywards and turns away. Well, I think Barry was upset because when the whistle came, right, came late, there was contact. But the official, almost like the NBA, where you wait to see if it goes in or not before you <laughs> call it. And a little bit tardy on the tweet, but still the same result it is a foul. Nelson at the stripe, a 60% free throw shooter. Buries her first. Well, you see why Coach Sonnenberg has extolled her virtues here of late. She has played really well. Yes. And that's her eighth, looking for nine. And with it. She gives the Patriots the lead. 35-34, and here comes that 1-2-2 press. Trying to go over the top of it. Durfee, despite being a power forward, showing off some handles. Impressive stuff by Durfee because there's no one help in the middle. She had to break it one-on-one. -on -one. Second cutter through was Blanchard, and she's fouled. Coming over the back, and I think Grace Haas is going to pick up her first. Yeah, Haas trailed through the key. Anytime you trail through the key, bad things happen. Either going to give up a layup or a foul. Haas had to foul. Inbounding from the baseline, Durfee out in between the circles. Oakley will slow it down. I got a little bit of a mismatch up top. Didn't take advantage of it. Blanchard, a hand in her face by Priggy. The perimeter defense has been very tight. That was a little too tight. Kelsey Priggy will pick up her first. Uh, Tenora recognized it a little bit late. Uh, they tried to get it to the corner to Oakley, who had Haas on her. That's a matchup that she could beat Haas to the rim with a little dribble drive, but Tenora saw it too late. Kenzie Priggy will head to the bench for the Patriots, subbing in. Going a little bit more guard-oriented right now. A little bit slow on that yep. switch. Oakley. Blanchard kicks it right back to Oakley and immediately addressing a hand in her face. Haas comes out on her. That's a mismatch guard on a post, Ooh. and she's going to take it in. And how about Nelson getting back? What are they calling here? That's calling it a charge. That is a really good court awareness by Nelson. Anticipation gets herself set, knowing that Tenor is going to try and beat Haas up the dribble. Nelson being harassed. Takes it up the far side, 35-34. Not quite halfway through the third quarter. I like how Blanchard plays defense. Great with the slide, and she is physical, making a difficult life for Nelson. And they were trying to post Crossland up, and the ball went right through her fingertips. Oakley on the drive. Doesn't care that she's got three. Cut off in the middle of the paint. Bodies flying, but no whistle. Lee. 
Back to Blanchard. Leans in. Leaves it short. Wow. It's been frenetic here in the last 90 seconds. Geldy loses the ball. It's knocked out of bounds. And it should take a shot to the head. I think they're going to get a foul call on Carly Oakley. Hustled back. Tried to get in front. But going to be contacted. Oakley second. Buzzer sounds. Priggy will check. Nope, check that. That is number three. And that is Seaman checking back in. Now, Seaman, who had a really good opening sequence to this basketball game, been quiet a little bit since. They need to get her active again. 35-34, Patriots with the lead. 3.41 left to go. And is that substitution apparently not being allowed? Nelson comes back out onto the court. And because we've got free throws coming. Do we? That was team foul number five, okay? Looks like the official's still kind of getting used to the new, new free rule. throw rule. I know I asked you last week, but I'll ask you again, especially if people are tuning in for the first time to get your take on it. Your thoughts on the new rule this hate year? Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. Most Missed people I talk to do. Missed the old one-on-one -on -one situation. I thought the mental toughness that you had to have with the one-on-one -on -one was important to the game. If something changes when you know you're going to get two automatically. Well, it changes your your strategy, too. It, does. it used to be foul the worst free throw shooter, right? Now it doesn't matter because everybody gets a pair. And unfortunately for Patrick Henry, it doesn't matter. It's going to be an empty trip. Free throw shooting has not been great here at the Emerald. Look at this. Patrick Henry picking up man-to-man -man full court pressure. And look at this. Oakley says, I've got the dime. Dishes off to Blanchard. And one coming. Yeah, you got to credit Oakley, though, pushing the defense to the limit and then dishing it off the last second to Blanchard. And Blanchard, she likes physicality. Goes up through the contact. Old-fashioned three-point opportunity. Wow. Eowyn Blanchard on a great feed from Oakley. Try and complete the three-point play. A 47% free throw shooter. She's good here. Eowyn Blanchard now with five on the evening, and it's a two-point Rams lead. On the drive, lots of contact. That ball trickles off the right side by Boyer, and it looks like it will be maintained well, one thing is the apparent. Patriots. If you're going to attack the lane, you're going to play in the low block, you better bring your toughness card yeah. here tonight. It's not enough to absorb it. You're probably going to have to create it if you want to get a shot off. Out in between the circles. Open for three. They're going to keep taking them. They're going to keep making them. Another one, this time by Sophie Geldy. Now Patrick Henry, tardy getting back on defense. Tenora going to make him pay. Nova Oakley with four points here in the second half. She's got 15. And the Rams back up on top by one. 39-38, 30-second timeout. We'll break with them. This is a first insurance group timeout at the Emerald. Rams 39, Patriots 38 on DCTV. left to go in the third quarter. Man, they are getting after each other. Three-point shots, transition baskets, even from the free throw line. Rams 39, Patriots 38. Patrick Henry will inbound, and how about this? The Rams going to give them a taste of their own medicine, picking up full court and pressure. Uh, they tried it a little bit in the first half, but Patrick Henry made him pay, so they got out of it. But, you know, the old adage is that teams that like to press don't like to be pressed. Yep. Well, they break it. Geldy running the point right now with Nelson sitting on the bench. Priggy and Nelson both about to check right back in. Open from the corner, another three. Geldy left that one short. And pulled down by Nova Oakley. Dangerous long court pass. Julia Durfee has it originally go off of Crossland and then off of her. Yeah, one of those that you're going to watch film tomorrow and say, why, why did we do this? The reward risk factor wasn't where you wanted to be. She catches it where she going, out of bounds anyhow. Take care of the basketball up top, just bring it up. 
Altonora still out in pressure. Nelson will bring it across the timeline. Down by a point. She's going in hard, and she walked with the basketball. A lot of contact. They are letting them play tonight. Well, it's Blanchard, though, that created the turnover. Her physicality has been impressive here tonight. And now the Patriots coming out in full court pressure. Oakley surrendering the basketball. Durfee forced to change direction. Now it's a three on two. They'll dish. Lee wants the three. She'll nail it. 13 on the evening. Another FM Bank, pardon me, another Premier Bank three pointer. Yeah, it was the pass. Allowed Lee to just do nothing but catch and go ahead and shoot. Lee has been impressive from behind the arc here tonight. Nelson will head to the charity stripe. The foul will go against Blanchard, her second. Nelson two for four this evening, entering tonight's contest as a 60% free throw shooter. This one rattles in and out. So many players. Don't take advantage of anywhere close to the near 10 seconds they're allowed at that line. We'll see if she slows it down here. She has a very closed stance. Springy legs releases. She uses all of the backboard but gets it to fall. And it will allow them to press. And here comes Oakley again. Stops and pops. Couldn't quite get the friendly roll. I thought she probably could have kept going to, to the rim, got herself to the free throw line if she didn't make it. Patriots can pull to within one. Tie it with a three. Under two minutes now left to go third quarter. Open for three. I thought for a second Seaman wanted to pull the trigger, but they're going to run their offense. A much better job in the second half by Tenora running through screens, limiting the three-point ability of Patrick Henry. The ball seems to be sticking a bit, too, for the Patriots. They're working the ball inside, and offensive foul going to be called against Seaman. She leaned in, tried to get a little bit of separation. Miles, I think if she had gone straight up, I don't think the official calls that. But she leaned in and then pulled back again and pump faked. Even if she would have dipped the shoulder a little bit, but when you use the forearm to create the separation, they're going to it's an easy call for the officials. They're going to make it. Well, full court pressure again being shown here by the Patriots. Blanchard draws a contact. They're going to call the foul on the floor. And take your pick. Uh, it's going to be Nelson, I believe, that's going to get is. whistled up. That's her second. But now to the line. Boy, fouls have really mounted up here in the latter part of the third quarter. Blanchard will shoot a pair. She's one for one tonight. Make it two for two. A little bit of a weird rotation on that shot, but she got it to go. Blanchard, a 47% free throw shooter. Lee will catch a breather for the Rams as Bailey will check in. There you take a look. She's gassed. She's breathing heavy through her mouth. Blanchard gathering herself, and this one goes begging off the right side. So the lead remains four. A really important 130 left in this half for Patrick Henry. Don't want this lead to explode for wow. Tenor, and Great job by Haas, Haas on the drive. The running hook. Give her four off the bench, and it pulls the Patriots to within a basket. Durfee crosses over. They're going to let her shoot from outside. She's not much of a three-point threat. They got to move the ball, though. Just too stationary. Well, stolen away. Here comes Nelson. She doesn't care. Forced one up, and they may have bailed her out. She was coming hard and at a very odd angle, but she draws the foul. And Nova Oakley going to commit the foul, but... Is that her fourth? She got it up. It is. Yeah, it's going to be her fourth, but she got up a little bit slowly, grabbing her hip. Yeah, fourth foul. You got to believe that you got to get her off the floor here if you're Tenora. Boy, Mark 53 and 310 seconds of the third quarter down as Nova Oakley has picked up her fourth foul. She will be sitting for how long? We will wait and see. The first free throw falls. Nelson will try and connect on her second. I credit Nelson, though, recognizing and have the ability to go through the contact. He's going to get the foul call against one of their better players. Smart move. And she looked good on both of those, and we're knotted up at 43. On the drive, leaning in. Durfee showing no fear. <laughs> How about the courage of Julia Durfee saying, Haas, get out of the way. 
That's her first basket of the night. And they're up by a pair, 45-43, with 32 seconds left to go. Nelson into the paint. We got a whistle, and we have a hand-checking foul. Uh, this is going to frustrate both coaches because in the first half, you could do just about anything you wanted to dribblers, and now it's a little ticky-tack up front. Boy, we've seen a lot more go uncalled. That'll be the third on Blanchard. So foul trouble starting to mount up for a pair of starters. And right back at the charity stripe, Nelson sees the first go in and out. She's five for seven. Check that, five for eight. And now she's just picked up her sixth. And it pulls the Patriots to within a point. Double teaming at the top of the key. Blanchard, nifty dribbling on the baseline. Did she step out of bounds? Boy, Nelson has just been heady, especially here in the third quarter. And it causes the dribble off the foot by Blanchard. And now Patrick Henry has an opportunity to take the lead. Nelson stops. Whoa, almost lost by Crossland. Oh, she's wide open. Mm -hmm. Good call here. And they're going to call a foul. Wave off the basket. Yeah, they're going to call Schwab on a moving screen. Yep. It was a mover. It was such a mover you could call U-Haul. <laughs> wow, what a huge difference. So instead of up by two, down by one, and surrendering the basketball, Oakley deep into the post, stripped by Crossland. Will she get the shot off? No, and it was swatted away anyway. So three are in the books to Nora, hanging on to a one-point lead. Rams 45, Patriots 44. Don't go anywhere. The final eight when we come back to the Emerald live on DCTV. Final eight minutes put up on the scoreboard clock. We welcome you back to the Emerald. Brent Balbanot alongside Miles Holiday. One point separating these two teams. The Rams enter tonight on a two-game skid, really suffering a heartbreaker in their last contest going into the weekend. It was last Thursday. They've been sitting on a 60-58 double overtime loss against Fairview. On the flip side, the Patriots have been humming on all cylinders. A six-game win streak entering tonight's contest. Right now, anybody's ball game. The final eight minutes will decide it as the Rams lead by one. Miles, what do you expect to see in the final quarter here? I'll tell you what I would do. I'd tell my ladies, put your chin on the rim and dribble drive every chance you got because they're calling fouls when you go to the, to, the, uh, to, the, to the lane, get yourself to the free throw line, and if you get cut off, kick it back out for those open threes. Well, again, with four fouls, Nova Oakley, oh, we're going to have a travel here, turning it over, Blanchard. Nova Oakley remains on the Tenora bench. Blanchard also with three, as is, I think that's it as far as foul trouble goes for Tenora. Yeah, for how, the Patriots, Seaman with three. Yeah, how are you going to navigate that moving forward if you're Andrew Thiel? Oh, nice backdoor cut by Crossland, and I think they bailed her out. Durfee called for her third. I don't know how that ball got to her to begin with. Durfee was really strong on her defense there, and somehow it found her. Uh, Tenora has been overplaying the perimeter in the second half because of the three-point game of Patrick Henry, so the backdoor cut will be there. Bounced past to Haas, stolen away by Blanchard. Coast to coast, finishes with the finger roll. Uh, Blanchard's just been fantastic for the Lady Rams, an unsung hero here tonight. She's got eight on the evening, and it's a three-point Rams lead. Thinking about driving, Seaman will back it out, spins, gets into the middle of the paint again. Boy, eyes in the back of her head, and the ball swatted away. Schwab got a facial. That was Lee with their fourth block of the game. Skip pass. Nelson from distance. 
Off the front of the iron, and Brewer skies with a two-handed board. She's stripped by Crossland. Then the ball out of bounds. Oh, and in disgust, she slams the ball down. It will be Tenora basketball. <laughs> Did you see the facial expression? That young lady expects perfection out of herself. Couldn't grab it and save it for Patrick Henry, despite a really good effort. Just over a minute into the fourth and final quarter. Rams trying to get off the snide. This would be a huge win, even though it's a non-conference matchup. Blanchard keeping a waist-tied dribble. Seaman staying right in her jersey. Oakley, who has been quiet in the second half, had nine at the intermission, yet to score. Durfee, nice pass. I don't think Bailey was quite set. The ball might have been forced a bit. Quick outlet at the other end. Odd angle. Quick shot by Seaman. Bailey has the rebound. Outlets and Blanchard trying to dribble out of it. I think Coach Thiel called a timeout. A yeah, really good timeout because things were getting a little bit out of control. Looked like it was going to be another turnover. Patrick Henry had to trap. Good call by Coach Thiel. 30-second timeout. We'll take a first insurance group timeout with them. No change in our score. Don't go anywhere. Nip and tuck here at the Emerald on DC TV Sports. Fourth and final quarter. Excellent ball game so far here this evening against between, I should say, two good teams. Nine and three. Patrick Henry trailing six and five to Nora. 47-44. Coming out of that last time out, Nova Oakley with four fouls. Leading score for the Rams still on the bench as Lee puts up an open three. Got a good look. It's in and out. Oakley ties up Seaman. And a really good job by Oakley just getting a hand out. I thought Seaman could have stepped through and brought that ball through it, saved the jump ball arrow. But fortunately for Patrick Henry, it stayed with them. Under six left to go in the ball game. Patriots can pull it within one, tie it with a three. Crossland in the high blocks, going to back her girl down, and good defense by Derpy. Got the board, and then a frustration foul. By Crossland. I yeah, sure was, right? You miss a bunny. What what do you have to do? You got to commit the foul right away. And Crossland, a sophomore, she's going to get talked to, settle her down a little bit on the bench. She was so good in the first half. Yep. A little bit frustrated here in the second. She only has two points in the second half. She had 14 at the intermission. Picking up at half court, Durfee, spin move. Keeping her dribble, Nelson on her. Blanchard being aggressive. Good. Defensive job to slide down, take away the baseline by Geldy. And corralling it inside. Quick outlet. Geldy takes the pass from Seaman. You got to wonder where are the points going to come from with this current lineup on the floor for Patrick Henry. Oh, Nelson, a pass to nobody. I'm not sure if she thought that Schwab was going to pop. Schwab looked like she was crashing for a potential offensive board, and that's an unforced turnover. Yeah, Schwab is going to tell her, look, I'm a post player. I don't, I don't fly out to the perimeter. <laughs> yeah, look for me in the, the low block area. Again, Patriots picking up three-quarters court. Blanchard, nobody picks her up. She's going to stop and pop from 17. Sweet-looking jumper. Uh, she has been fantastic on the defensive end all night long. And timely on the offensive end, Blanchard, one of the players of the game for the Lady Rams. She's got 10 on the night, the fourth Ram with double figures. This is a heat check, deep three by Seaman. Ball being tapped around, Oakley secures it. Now Patrick Henry snacking on some danger here, down five. You feel the momentum, all with the Lady Rams. Durfee at the top of the key, they'll lay off of her. She'll put it on the floor. Oakley with a rare shot in the second half, and she makes good with an f and bank, pardon me, a Premier Bank three. And just like that, another answer from long range. This time it was Nelson. 52-47, Oakley 
Nice drive, nice dish to Bailey who finishes down low. A big shot for Bailey because she had a point blank range one earlier in this quarter, came up empty on it. A little confidence builder right there. Both teams trading baskets. It is now a seven point advantage. Nelson, nice drive, nice dish. Another three on the way, off the mark. Offensive board though, they'll reset. Seaman cut off, Oakley doing a good job defensively. Starting to inch towards crunch time. Three and a half left to go in the ball game. Seaman kicks it to Nelson. She's really been their only consistent scoring threat here in the second half. Long three, just as I say that, Seaman gets in on the act. Just her first basket of the second half. She's got seven points, but it cuts the deficit down to four. An absolutely huge basket for Patrick Kenry. Allows them to get back to four. Call the timeout, and you get Crossland back in. They are trying to get her in, but the action never stops. She was sitting at the scores table for seemingly forever. And if you're Patrick Henry, though, you got to start taking some chances here on the defensive end. Get a little transition basketball going off of your steals. You still have plenty of time if you're Patrick Henry, but you really can't afford to trade baskets anymore at this no, point. No. At the same time, if you're Tenora, I don't want to say you take your edge off. You still run your offense, don't you? But at the same time, you want to milk a little clock. Where's that fine line, so to speak, between staying aggressive but also milking the clock? You're going to tell your, your ladies in the huddle right here if you're Andrew Thiel, Anticipate pressure coming out of this timeout, right? They've been doing a great yep. job of getting Oakley on the move on the pass, and she's been catching on the move so she can get the ball up the floor in a hurry. Don't be stationary because that's when the traps occur. Buzzer sounds. Both teams break their respective huddles. They have beat on each other all night long. And let's not forget, too, starting center Ada Crispin, yeah. who averaged eight and seven, was injured and only played six seconds of this ball game, and Patrick Henry is still within arm's reach. Rams looking for what would be considered a huge win here on their home court. That's Crossland against Oakley. Athlete on athlete. And Nova Oakley with four fouls back in the game, and she's showing no fear. Got a good look. Follows her shot with the board. Kicks it out, and here's the smart move by Carly Oakley. A great offensive rebound by Oakley collecting her own shot. 54-50 now under three minutes left to go in the game. And they're running a little bit of a weave out here in between the circles. They're spacing it out. Oakley. Patrick Henry to make chances on it. Open for 15. I didn't think, it didn't look like she thought she'd be that open. And yet... The Patriots throw it away at the other end. And here comes Nova Oakley again. One on three. Into the paint. Nice job to kick it out. Lee will take a three. That is feast or famine, but that may be the dagger. That might be one of those that Andrew Thiel says, no, no, no. Yes, nice job, Lee. She has been outstanding from behind the arc all night long. 57-50. It's now a three-possession game. Coming up on two minutes left to go. Crossland forces up a shot. Lee with the board, and the Rams should be in no rush now. They spread it out. Take care of the basketball. Work that clock. Patrick Henry, and we're going to get a timeout by Tenor first. We'll take a break with a buck 57 left to go in the ball game. Rams 57, Patriots 50. We'll have the crunch time when we return on DCTV Sports. The scene from the Emerald to Nora High School Gymnasium. A buck 57 left to go in regulation. Rams 57, Patriots 50. Host to Nora with the lead and the ball. And at what point now, if you are Patrick Henry, how much time can you let 
Oh my goodness. Here I was about to ask you about strategy and how much time you can let tick off before you have to foul. And Eowyn Blanchard with an uncharacteristic travel. Yeah, she's been so good at many things tonight. Untimely turnover right there, 17 on the night now for Tenor, and it's keeping Patrick Henry with a little bit of glimmer of hope. A must score possession though for the Patriots. Crossland with a little bit of a forearm shiver, leaves it short, and now a rebound by Lee. She is fouled, I believe this is going to be Haas. I think Schwab is the one that commits it. She was jumping up and down. It is Schwab, it'll be her second. Well, here we are a few seconds later as Priggy checks in, but the same question goes for you. How much time can you allow to tick off the clock if you're Patrick Henry? Well, I'm a believer in you got to have as much time as you need. So if you don't get a steal right away, let's see how good of a, a foul shooting team Tenor is. Go ahead and get the foul committed so you can keep the clock. Oh, my goodness. Launching up a three. Lee from the corner. Oh, my goodness. Well, hitting the deck but appearing to be none the worse for wear. Abby Schwab takes one across the grill. Yeah, if I'm Andrew Thiel, I'm telling the ladies, no, no more threes, right? Let's just hold on to the basketball. Even if it's Lee, she's been so deadly from behind the arc, but the, the clock, we want it to run. We have the lead. Lee picks up the foul. Still down by seven. A minute 14 left to go. Haas on the drive. Spots up and had a good look. Just couldn't find it. And right now, if you are the Rams, get the ball across the timeline and then hang on to it. And the Patriots will oblige as Seaman picks up her fourth. What Patrick Henry should do is tell one of the officials, look, we want a foul from here. Because a lot of times officials won't know, right? Mm -hmm. And they will help you out if you're trying to foul. They'll say, okay, we understand what you're trying to do. So you get a little bit of contact, they'll make the whistle. Seaman out, Priggy in, but Nova Oakley's just going to hang on to the basketball. And Patrick Henry's going to have to foul. Yeah, I'm a little surprised they haven't yet. Just too much time gone off the clock. And Carly Oakley drove baseline, but in no way wanted to shoot. Eowyn Blanchard does, and cannot save that from going out of bounds. Uh, no doubt about Blanchard was contacted there. She should be shooting some free throws. <clears throat> but Patrick Henry still a little bit of door open. Not 100% closed. Tenora has obliged, though, by taking three shots in their last three possessions. Now, fortunately for the Rams, Patrick Henry has not converted. Crossland cut off on the baseline. Great defense. Top of the key, Seaman. Pump fake. She still can't get a shot off. Seconds ticking off the clock. Haas with a point-blank shot. Can't find it, and that may be it. Uh, just a great job by Tenora closing out on shooters. Even when the ball was reversed, Great defense, probably the best defensive possession of the night for Tenor, knowing that Patrick Henry had to launch a three. Foul on Nelson. And is that four or five? It looks like four, so it will not be a free throw shooting situation. The next one will. It just depends, does Patrick Henry want to extend the game or not? Blanchard takes the inbounds. And they double teamed. Foul and Crossland both. Nelson. I was trying to help her up. Yeah, nice little sportsmanship there by Nelson. I hit you pretty hard, but I'm going to help you up. And I believe I heard Crossland's name being called there. It'll be her third, but now it's a free throw shooting opportunity for Awen Blanchard. 47% off the mark. And Tenora should just clear the lane out right here. You don't want to commit a foul. Even if Patrick gets it and dr drives the length of the court, you know, it's going to take so much time off. Awen Blanchard drains it. Quick timeout. We will keep it here. I want to remind you, we will be back here on Friday night. It will be Tenora's boys getting set to try and defend the home court at the Emerald as they will take on Wayne Trace. Wayne Trace with a couple of studs. Oh, Kyle Stoller, the cleaner. Yep. Keep an eye on how many offensive rebounds he gets and puts back. And, and Mr. Big Shot, Mr. Big Time, Brooks Lockoff. 
He has got go-go gadget arms, man. His ability to steal and then convert. And I don't know if I've ever seen a high school player better at shooting off the dribble from behind the arc. He is legit, man. Uh, five new ladies on the floor for the Rams. Wow, subbing out here in the closing seconds. Trying to get you some new themes with these spaces. As Christina Meyer checking in. Jaden Sines. I believe I see Tatum Kreps on the floor as well. And come up and get the dribbler. Don't let him roll it the whole way. A smart move by Tenora. I think I see Kenzie Nagel on the court as well. For the final 10 seconds. Crossland crosses over. Running one-hander. Ball just hasn't fallen in the past three minutes for Patrick Henry. And they're off the snide. A two-game skid is broken. Tenora defends home court here at the Emerald. They had to earn it by a final of 58 to 50. Now seven and five overall. The Patriots fall to nine and four. And certainly our best wishes, thoughts and prayers go out to Ada Christman. Hopefully that ankle will be healed soon. Yeah, it, without a doubt, what a special player she has to be. Got two more years, but of course you want that ankle to be fine so she can finish out her sophomore year but let's not uh, blink on the fact that Tenora, what a huge win for them. Get some momentum. When they'll have some momentum going to Wayne Trace when they play them later in this week. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll have our Steichman Automotive Group player of the game. We'll also have our Mark Modes Ford stat update. And we'll also get underway with the Brunswick Guy and Contact Lens Center postgame show. Don't you go anywhere. You're watching DCTV Sports. And we welcome you back to the Emerald Tenora High School Gymnasium. Brent Balvinon alongside Miles Holiday. It was a nip and tuck battle, but the Tenora Rams break a two-game skid, and they had to earn this one. And at the same time, they snap a six-game winning streak for Patrick Henry. Final score, 58-50. to We're going to break down our Mark Motes uh, Ford stat summary. We'll also have our Steichman Automotive player of the game, but as we get the Brunswick Eye and Contact Lens Center postgame show underway, Miles, what, if anything, stands out more than anything else in tonight's contest for you? Oh, boy, what a great, gritty effort by the ladies from Tenora, right? Addison Lee, red hot from behind the arc. Uh, and what about the, the great defense by Blanchard? Uh, just one of those efforts, that I think, if you're Tenora and, and you're Coach Steele, that you can kind of build off of. It could have been very easily coming off a of, Two tough losses to just fold the tent here tonight, but they didn't do that. That's got to be exciting for the Tenora Bunch. You know, basketball is a game of runs. So anytime you see six, seven, maybe even double digits, as long as it's not pushing 20, uh, most coaches will say, we're not going to panic. Mm -hmm. You'll get two or three stops here, provided you score at the other end. You can change the complexion of the game. But what we saw tonight was what a great equalizer that three-point line is. Oh, absolutely huge. I don't know if Addison Lee is ever going to have a better night shooting from behind the arc. She was sensational from downtown. Uh, whatever she ate uh, for dinner or for <laughs> lunch, make sure you duplicate that. 
uh, have her do exactly the same thing so she can shoot as well as she did here tonight. As I see Coach Thiel coming out, we expect him to come up and join us. Uh, I was going to say, I know we're the new boys on the block here, but I believe he's coming up. I see all kinds of white jerseys. And how we work in this, you need us to come down there, Will. Is that what you're telling us? You're going to shoot up from us. Come on up. <laughs> oh, my gosh, and he's bringing, all right, bring them all. Sure, why not? You betcha. This is such a quiet group. We'll probably get one sentence out of them uh, they, combined. They but. look like they're a little bit loud right now. <laughs> yeah. And, well, they should. Oh, my goodness. All right. White jerseys galore. That's okay. No problems. Congratulations. Hey, winner. Nice job, winner. Come on up, Oakley. Winner, winner, and winner. Congratulations. All right, we got one headset, so we're going to rotate you all in, okay? Can this group form a sentence complete with each of them? They've been so quiet around me lately. The way they play tonight, absolutely can. That's for sure. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about this. A situation where... First things first, thoughts and prayers go out to Ada Chrisman. Uh, yeah. Six seconds into this game, and the energy just got sucked out of it. Absolutely. But at the same time, you reset, you got after it. And this game was almost like a couple of heavyweights standing in the middle of the ring trading punches with each other. You survived a couple of really serious runs, but then you responded. What did you learn? What did this team learn about itself tonight? It's not what we learned tonight. It's what we learned. Like these girls did it last season. They do it this year. Perseverance. Um, you know, they, it's a joke in the locker room about digging ourselves a hole. And they've told me before, oh, it's more fun that way. No, it's not. Really? They so like you like playing holes. ping pong in coach's head? Is that what you're telling me? I can't grow hair for a reason. So. <laughs> so you are the reason he combs his hair with a towel. Is that what you're telling me? Okay, fair enough. In all seriousness, though, we were talking about this. They weren't around. Our pick to click tonight. I look at, again, Miss Oakley here, and averaging six points per ball game, she has nine at the half. I think she took one shot in the second half, corner three, right in front of you. I think your feet were off the ground a little <laughs> bit, but also defensively because it was athlete on athlete. I'm going to give each one of you your props, but let's start with number 11 here. Number 11 shows up every night. She's my ball handler. We know the whole team trusts her to handle the ball, especially in intense situations. We know at the end of the game like that, we know if they're going to follow us, we're going to be in that situation. We know we need to get the ball to her because she can dribble the lights out of that ball, yes. keep it safe, protect it. Man, She can manage the game very well. It took a complete effort here and with the bench as well. But talk about when one was open or one wasn't, the floor sense here this evening and the communication that this group had with each other. They communicated well. but I mean, they create open space, but the big thing we talk about is creating opportunities not just for yourselves but for your teammates, and that's – Hats off to them because tonight that's what they did. They would drive in the lane, kick it back out, and defense collapsed, and we took advantage of shot opportunities. I mean, they, they drove inside strong, drove inside aggressively. Um, we got several fast break points out of this one tonight. Yes. Beat them down the court, and that's what these girls are looking for that all the time. They, it's a track meet, and they're track athletes for sure. They're ready to go. <laughs> they're, ready. they're all <laughs> smiling. Is there an inside joke going on that I don't know about here yet? I think it's that they're a little nervous about wearing this thing or something here in a minute. You all came up, it. so this is where the camera is. We'll make sure we get your moneymaker's best side. But <laughs> this is now one of many here. You're jumping back into GMC conference action, obviously. But, again, you knew that you would have, could have, should have in your yeah. last game last week. Both of them. Both of them. There are times where you may walk out of the gym and you say, you know what, we'll tip our cap to you. You won. There are other times where we'll say, you know what, we gave you one. We lost that one. But you kick it to the curb and you reset. There's a lot of ball, a lot of season left to be played. This group now got the win back in their sails. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, last year I think we played our best ball by the end of the season. That's when it matters most. So I think we're trying to get, I mean, we want to win every game we're out playing. But, uh, you know, last week two of them got away from us, combined margin of three points, which is rough. But, you know, against Miller City, down by what we were at halftime, come back and almost win that one, then double overtime against Fairview with the three of my starters fouled out. I mean, these girls push through. It's each and every one of them. That's such a team effort. And these girls, just, they show up to play each and every night. I can't expect more of them. I ask so much as it is, and they all push through. It's, and, they, and they do it for themselves, for their teammates, for, the, for everybody. All right. When it gets to be above five below, this gym's going to be packed again, correct? Yeah. yeah. For yep. those that are watching, they're pretty good. Come back out here. <laughs> Make sure you sit in the sands. It means something, though, to feed off the energy. They don't get tired in those situations, no, do they? No, they, they build off each other. They create the energy for themselves and for, and for one another. The bench does a great job. 
it's, it's just so much fun to watch these girls go out, show up and play the way they do. It's a lot of fun. All right, congratulations, Coach. Thank you. All right, it's like a line change in hockey. <laughs> Addison Lee, go ahead. First up. Yeah, she thought being first up would be cool until she realized now it's first to be on the air. There's the camera. Make sure you smile. <laughs> Looking down here, 16 points. You also did it on the defensive end, though. Mm -hmm. What was your mindset? What was your preparation coming into tonight? Just don't worry about mistakes on offense. Just get back on defense. Do what I know I can do. Pretty good at blocks. So just <laughs> yeah. doing that. You had a few of those here this evening. <laughs> yeah. They let you play tonight, too. Mm -hmm. There were yep. quite a times where you found yourself on your keister, yep. and it wasn't enough to just look up. You had to get up and transition back. How physical was this ball game compared to the rest you played so far? Really physical. I mean, all of them have been, but we've been got, we've been getting used to like the slapping a little bit, and definitely there was some of that tonight. So, I mean, it's something to get used to, but it's the new game, so got to get used to it. Also help side. I was here at practice yesterday. You guys were working on a couple of things. We're not going to let the cat out of the bag because I can keep – the scout to myself <laughs> but at the same time it's one thing to go one-on-one -on -one and say okay you're on an island that wasn't yeah. the case that's not what happened tonight you don't win if you don't play good help side defense mm -hmm. tonight yep does this group get the credit it deserves for being as good a defensive team as it is I think we get some credit but definitely not as much as we should I mean we definitely get scrappy we get in there when we need to and I definitely think it needs to be looked at more often I think we need to <laughs> Get looked at a little bit more highly for All it. All right. 16 points tonight. Did, mm -hmm. did it seem like that, or were you just finding your shots within no, the rhythm? No. Um, at halftime, when I looked up at the scoreboard and I saw 10, I was kind of confused because I only thought I maybe had, like, four. But I guess it I guess it worked out for me. <laughs> What's this win tonight do for your confidence? It does a lot. It does a lot. After last week, it was a little bit down. I think that goes for the whole team. We were struggling a little bit after two really close losses. But I think it'll do a lot. And going into Thursday, I think it'll do a, a really good thing for us being in a away game. All right, congratulations <laughs> to you. Thank you. All right, hand it off. The baton, you guys are all track stars, so you know what the relay is all about. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, there we go. That's the kind of personality that I've been told the number 11 has here. Carly Oakley, I've got you for 12. Nine points in that first half. You look like you came out on a mission. Did coach challenge you? Did you challenge yourself? I challenge myself every game. The whole team challenges each other, and as long as we play like a team, I feel like we play our best. Talk about getting in the offensive rhythm, the offensive flow. Did you look for your shot more tonight? I did, but Nova also ran the court very well, so she was open half the time to speed it up to when her. When Nova's not flossing, she is <laughs> shooting some very effective three-point shots. Yeah, I pay attention when I watch you guys at practice. I thought, Coach, you were going to come out in a new defense, and I'd see them all do it. But right now, nobody does it as well as she does, apparently. Second half. I think I only had you for one shot. Did you take more than that one corner three? I don't think you looked for it, so. did you? No. But you distributed. Ball handling. As a matter of fact, in the closing seconds, you put on a Harlem Globetrotters dribbling clinic. You were down underneath on the baseline. You could have shot, but you realized taking time off the clock was more important. Can you just talk about your growth, your basketball IQ? Because coach tells me you're pretty special. Yeah, well, growing up, my dad was my coach, so he was kind of in my head all the time, and then... So you had no choice but to get good. Correct, yes. <laughs> but I am obviously look at the team more than I'm worried about my own stats, so as long as our number's up there higher, that's all that matters. You guys hold them to 50 points. Normally, their average is just under 50, and they came in on a six-game winning streak. What's that say about your defense tonight? Our defense has been so much better this year than it has in previous years, and I think anyone can see that. Um... We had a lot of help side. We communicated so much better this game than last game. So I think it's a really confidence booster. Congratulations Thank to you. Thank you. One Oakley to another. Nova, you're going to step up. All smiles right there, her best side. Nova Oakley finishes with 15. You had 11 at the half. I'll ask you the same question. Mindset coming into this one. You knew that you probably should have won your last two, at least one of those. But this group didn't look like it panicked. You were very all you were all business like yesterday at practice. What was your mindset coming into this one? Uh, I just knew we had to play like a team, and I just try not to think about it. Like, just don't think, just play, and play really hard. We just need to play really hard and play our best. Talk about how you fit into the offense here. You were getting, obviously, some good looks from three. The ball movement seemed really sharp tonight. What do you have to see before you decide you're going to pull the trigger? Um, well, 
I don't know. I just kind of feel it out. I try to not think a lot because I know if I think too much, I'm probably going to miss it. But <laughs> I get a little scared sometimes when someone's running at me. But I usually just try and have my feet set and get the shot off as quick as possible. But you can score in different ways. You weren't just draining long-range jumpers. You were driving towards the basket. You were also getting fouled and getting to the free throw line. You're not a one-trick pony. You can yeah. score in multiple ways, right? Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about your defense and especially the top half of that 2-3. Even when you were playing man principles, Coach told me you and Carly are being asked to cover a lot of court. When the ball drops below the free throw line, you're asked to really sag down and help. But then when it goes up top, you've got to be quick and recover. What kind of challenge is that? Um, it's really hard because you kind of have to like pick and choose. Do you want to help stop ball? But if you stop ball, then you have to they can kick it out to the corner. So it's really just you just got to hustle really hard and then just focus on the ball mainly. Do you feel your opposition out over the course of two or three quarters? Maybe somebody has a, a tip or you kind of get a feel where you jumped a few passing lanes tonight as well. You start to get an idea of what they're going to do and maybe deke them a little bit? Yeah, it, the more you get into the game, you kind of feel how they're playing, and then you can judge how you play defense based off that. Seven and five. You're a couple games above 500. You're back in charge. I'm looking at the smiles here. What's this do for you individually, but also as a team, to get one that you knew you probably should have had at least one, if not a couple games ago? You knew that you had it in you. Yeah, I think this really just boosts our spirits and gives us more confidence because, you know, obviously losing, it doesn't make us feel great, but we just want to win so bad. And I think we really played like a team tonight, and that really helps boost our spirits. You did. Congratulations, winner. All right, hand it off. Julia Durfee. Well, I'm glad I came to practice yesterday, Coach, because otherwise this would be, okay, wait a minute, name, number. Let's talk about your defense tonight because you were showing some grit. I'm guessing you had, what, a bowl of nails for breakfast this morning? Did they challenge you yes. knowing that their front court was going to be physical tonight? Yes. Turn this way. We want to see that moneymaker of yours. So what was your mindset coming into this one? Um, I knew I needed to face guard halftime, and I I just I love defense. I wanted to push them and like make sure one doesn't get the ball halftime and that's it like I just and I knew like yeah you worked a lot yesterday on defense and in particular help side defense yes switching calling stuff out again it'd be one thing if you were on an island and if you're beat then basically it leads to a score can you talk about the communication and how this group always seems to be in the right spot they always help me communicate and they always push me. If I can't get through, they get through. Like they help me, and or I'll they'll push me to get her to her, or tell me or anything. And I try to get through as best as I can, and that's what I. You yeah. did. When you switch, though, quite often, again, technically you're listed as a post. You were on a lot of guards tonight, and you were showing some pretty fancy footwork. You can handle your own with backcourt players. It looks like you're not afraid. Nope. <laughs> she is a lady, a few words, but very good on the court. Talk a little bit about where this team is right now compared to where you were, say, even a month ago. That was the last chance we had to see was at the DPT Classic. How much better is this team than we four played, weeks ago? We played a lot more as a team. We're getting better. We're pushing each other, having more confidence. Um, yeah. How much better can this team still get? A lot better. We can communicate a lot more and push each other more. And We'll do great. What are you working on right now? I'm working on confidence, shooting the ball a lot more. Yeah. And post-game interviews, because we're going to have her up here again. Congratulations to you. Nice job. Thank you. One last one. Awen Blanchard. Whoa. Hey, winner. Hi. How you doing? Good. Look right there. Don't want to see your backside. Awen Blanchard, we had you down for 11 points on the game. She only had two at the intermission. Did yeah. Coach challenge you to get more aggressive offensively in the second half? A little bit, yeah. A little bit? <laughs> I'd say then she responded, Coach. What, expe what specifically what did specifically? you change from the first half to the second um, half? Just be more aggressive and, like, looking for those open shots. You had open shots. You also drove Drives, quite a bit. Yeah. And you got to the free throw line, uh, much like Nova Oakley. Yeah. You can score in a lot of different ways. It doesn't matter to you, does it? No, not really. Let's talk a little bit about your defense tonight. Because, again, you hold them to just 50 points. What was the focus tonight coming um, into this one? Just play hard D, be up in them, and then 
also have help defense and play hard the whole time. A lot of help defense. You found yourself on some players taller than you. When you switch, <laughs> doesn't automatically mean it's going to be a guard-to-guard -guard yeah. switch. What was the challenge taking on some of the bigger posts um, tonight? I just got to body them because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise I'll push you around. This was a physical game tonight, yes, though. Uh, Carly said it was the most physical game that you played so far this year. Would you agree? I would, yeah. How, would, how do you respond to that? If you're looking for a whistle and it doesn't come, you can do one of two things. You can fold like a house of cards, or you can raise your level of game and just say, you know what, I'll play until I hear a whistle. What's your mindset with regard play to that? Play until you hear a whistle, go up into them, make them have to call it. How much better can this team get right now? So much better. So much better. So much better. Coach Thiel says so much better as well, yeah. but you're going to enjoy it tonight. Of you course. can worry about that tomorrow and start looking forward to ahead. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice job. All right, that's all five starters and a coach. That's a six pack. What we are going to do is take a quick time out. When we come back, we've got one last piece of unfinished business our Steichman Automotive player of the game. Don't you go anywhere. We're back with more of the post game. You're watching DCTV Sports. Well, I tell you what, no, here we go. The camera's back here. You know, it's like the camera always finds the players and the coaches' backsides. We had that happen at Ayersville <laughs> last week. Nice job by Will to bring it up here tonight, though. Again, uh, rejoined by Miles here, Brent Balbinot. We are putting the wraps on it, but we've got one last piece of unfinished business time for our Steichman Automotive player of the game. In all honesty, we just had about a three-minute conversation with Coach Thiel. You could literally pick anybody off the roster tonight, and they would be well-deserving. If we're, it, throwing if it, a, we're throwing a dart at the board here tonight. If it was a book, each one of them had a chapter, right? Yes. They were fantastic. Uh, we every, are leaning towards Addison yeah, Lee. Yeah, I, I just can't believe uh, they win this basketball game without her three-point shooting ability here tonight. So uh, that's where my vote is going. Now, she will share her post-game prize with the rest of her teammates. I'm understanding that. But, man, Coach Steele said it was like having to choose between your kids because I had to bring them all up. So we said, fine, we will never deny anybody. But team win tonight, you celebrate for the next 24 hours, yeah. but then it's like that old adage, flush it. Not too high after a win, not too low after a loss. We're barely halfway into the season That's right true. now. This yeah. is a marquee win, though. A huge win against a really good Patrick Henry team, uh, getting momentum after those two back-to-back -back crushing losses, and uh, probably the best that this Tenora group has played in the last couple of years. They were fantastic here. Patrick Henry, and again, doing it without starter at center, Ada Chrisman, 8-7, eight and seven, stepping up big Casey Nelson with 16 points, along with Karis Crossland with 16. But in the end, it was the three-point shooting for Tenor just a little bit better. Tonight. It was, and the defense, they did a great job against Crossland in the second half, limited her ability to shoot from the arc. That's going to do it for our broadcast. Miles, as always, 
Pleasure to throw on the headset. Hopefully we get a chance to do it here in the future. I'd like to. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, folks. That's going to do it for our broadcast. If you enjoy them, ladies and gentlemen, please thank our underwriters. Their sponsorships helping us bring you local high school sports is absolutely a necessity. If you enjoy the coverage, walk through those businesses' doors, patronize those businesses, and give them a huge thank you, not just on our behalf, but on yours as well. That's going to do it for our entire crew. For Miles Holiday, I'm Brent Balbinot, and a big thank you for you, the fan, for tuning in. Final score this evening, Tenora snaps a two-game skid. They break a Patrick Henry six-game win streak by a final of 58-50. to 50. You've been watching a presentation of DCTV Sports.